Do you want to build a React Native app with multiple screens and a complicated navigation journey? In this tutorial, you're going to build an app with layered screens, nest drawers with other navigators, and handle platform-specific navigation. You're also going to learn all the advanced concepts that you might need to use when building a real-world app for production. And since the React Native docs recommend you to use a framework with React Native, this tutorial is going to use Expo. Hi, I'm Jan, I'm the CTO of React Squad, and if you want to hire senior React developers, click the link below the video now. Here's a diagram showing you what we're going to build. In this diagram, the solid lines represent the different navigators, tabs, drawer and stack, while the dotted lines represent the different screens. Your root navigator will be a stack navigator. It manages the splash screen during the app loading and it also includes the main and authentication screens. Lastly, it contains a web-only not found screen. The authentication screen will include a screen to log in, a screen to reset the password and a screen to register. After logging in, you will have access to the main screens, which are the home screen, the options screen, the details screen, and the settings screen. On Android, you usually access the settings through a burger menu, while on iOS, it is more common to have a tabs layout. So you're going to use the respective platform-specific design dynamically. And on iOS, you're going to open the options screen using a modal transition. In total, your app will feature eight screens. And the layout is inspired by the most common needs of most apps. Most apps have a home screen with a list view of items and then you have an options screen where you can filter the items and a detailed screen where you can view single specific items. But all of this user interface is not included in this tutorial because that's for a different video. If you want to code along, create your project now and give it a proper name. Then install off the dependencies that you need for the drawer and start your simulator. Then rename your app slash tabs folder to app slash main and change the content of your root layout in underscore layout to the following. Start by importing various styling dependencies that you need to use to show the different animations that your user is going to see. Then prevent the splash screen from auto hiding, create your root layout component and configure the use theme hook and the use fonts hook. Next, you want to hide the splash screen in a use effect once everything has loaded. While nothing has loaded, we just return now. Your root layout should return the theme provider from React Navigation, which in turn contains your root stack navigator, which then finally contains the main layout and the not found screen. You want to make your app look good, so install the dependencies for React Native Elements and then take the theme provider from React Native Elements, configure it for platform specific styling and also return it from your root layout. So you've just set up your basic project, now it's time to create your authentication screens. Above the main stack screen in your root stack navigator, create another stack screen for the login layout. Then create the login layout, which is also a stack navigator. Create the forgot password view adjacent to the login layout in the same folder. Your forgot password screen will be wrapped in a safe area view to guard against the notch on iOS devices. You can also use the themed view, which comes when you bootstrap a project with Expo, to make it look nice with all different background colors. The forgot password screen also contains a link. The link takes your users to the login screen by redirecting to the auth layout. But since the screen is also in a stack navigator, it's automatically going to get a back button when you navigate to it, because all screens get that when they're in a stack navigator, unless you explicitly opt out of it in your screen's navigation options. Now create the auth layout next. For that, create an auth folder, and then create an underscore layout TSX file in that folder, and give it the following content. Your auth layout should be a tabs navigator and it should contain the login screen and the register screen. And the icons that you use should be either outlined or completely filled out, depending on whether the screen is focused or not. Then create the login screen. Create the login screen adjacent to the auth layout file. Your login screen will be pretty similar to the forgot password view, so it will also contain a safe area view and a themed view. In addition to that, it's going to contain a link that takes you to the forgot password screen. The login screen should also contain a login button that takes your user to the main app. You're going to do that using router.replace, which erases the history so user cannot go back. But this is just a technique for this tutorial. In the real world, what your app would do is you would talk to your server and get back some kind of token. Then you would save that token in React Native's secure session storage. 
And then you would redirect the user based on whether there's something in your storage or not dynamically in your root layout. Watch till the end of the video to learn exactly how this technique is done. Now create the register screen. Your register screen in the real world will contain everything that you need for signing up your users, but for the sake of this tutorial, it's only going to contain a simple text because this tutorial is focused on the navigation part of your app. With that being done, you're done with the authentication screens and you can move on now to the main screens. Delete everything in your main folder and then create the following main layout. The main layout will handle the switching between the different navigators based on your user's device using React Native's platform module. If you want to switch between the drawer navigator and the tabs navigator, then you can use the platform.os module to detect whether your app is running on Android and then just return early from the main layout. The drawer navigator needs to be wrapped in a gesture handler view, but this gesture handler view only needs to be in your navigation stack once. So if you have multiple drawers in your navigation stack, just put this gesture handler at the highest level so all of the drawers are wrapped in it once. Since you're nesting a drawer with a stack navigator, you can use the ishome variable that you created earlier to only show the header for the drawer on the home screen and otherwise hide it. On Android, on the right side of the header in your drawer for the settings screen, there will be a button to lock the user out. You will again use the router.replace function to erase all of the history for the sake of this tutorial, but keep in mind, in the real world, you would redirect the user with a different technique shown at the end of this tutorial. Then by default, your main layout will return a tabs navigator, which will get rendered on all platforms that are not Android. And again, you're going to use either the outlined or the filled icon, depending on what screen you're on. Also notice how on the settings screens we now render the logout button on the left hand side because on iOS on the left hand side there will be nothing while on Android on the left hand side there will be the burger menu that opens and closes the drawer. Next adjacent to the main layout create a settings screen which will only contain a text. And then also create a home folder and configure the home layout. Your home layout is a stack navigator that contains the home screen, the options screen and the detail screen. Notice how the options screen is configured to be a modal transition so that it opens as a modal. You could use the platform module again to only do that on iOS because it's more common on iOS than on Android, but it works for both platforms. Now create the home screen. The home screen will contain two links, one to open the options screen and one to open the detail screen. Notice that the links are unaware of the style of the transition. You configured that in your stack navigator. Create the detail screen, which is only going to be a text again. And then lastly, create the option screen, which is also only going to contain a text. Now you're done and your app is going to look like this. You have the login screen, which allows you to go to the password reset screen and the register screen. And when you log in, you're getting to the main screen. And from the main screen, you can visit the options screen and the detail screen and the options screen opened as a modal transition. And then you also have the settings screen. Now I know the last thing that you were promised is to learn how you can redirect your user depending on their authentication state. So instead of using router.replace in your login button and your logout button, you would either in the login button save the authentication token to your secure session storage or in the logout button you would delete that token. And then assume you have a use auth hook that depending on whether there's a token in your secure session storage, it returns the user object or it returns maybe null or undefined. Then you can use the redirect component from Expo Router to redirect your user to the correct screen and this will apply globally throughout all of your app. Thank you so much for watching and if you learned something, subscribe now.